Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Wes Smith here from Witnesses of Yahuwah just coming to you with Let's Talk Truth Keeping the Sabbath. Amen. And the reason I'm coming to you because I did a live feed earlier, but I looked at the live feed and it was horrible. Uh, not on my end, but on the live feed end, it, was, it just didn't come out right. So I said I owe that much to y'all. And not only that, the spirit kept pressing me as I was uh, trying to do other things afterward. Uh, and I seen that it wasn't right. It was pressing me to to redo the video. So I don't expect it to be exactly you know on point with what I was saying word for word. But I will uh, retract and go back over everything that I had before. Uh, so, and starting that. Uh, we know that our Father Yahuwah, let's give him praise, the Most High. Uh, Yahuwah, he is a God that does not change, as stated in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Amen. I mean, and we know that he's a God that does not change. It's also stated in James chapter 1, verse 17, that he is not a God that shall change not as he is the son uh, of man that he shall lie not as the son of man that he shall repent so therefore we have to keep uh, keep in mind that when we're when we're um looking at this he told us if you love me you will keep my commandment so therefore keeping the sabbath is the fourth commandment and therefore it is uh, meant for us to keep that commandment let's look at it malachi chapter 3 verse 6 uh, says, for I am Yahuwah, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And meaning that at the time when they were doing things that they weren't, like not keeping the Sabbath by committing idolatry, he didn't consume them because he made a covenant with our, our uh, fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and even with David and different and Moses and different ones and even with us in the wilderness he made a covenant when we did the Passover and different things so we have to keep that in mind let's look at real quick in uh Jeremiah Jeremiah Yahoo uh chapter 17 verse 19 because he also gave us a warning what would happen if we defiled if we defiled the um the Sabbath day so the Sabbath day is a, a day that the, the, the set apart, set apart from other days. It, you know, six days you shall work. You should do all the things, uh, you know, get your, your things out of the way. And then on the Sabbath day, you to keep it holy and rest and spend time with Yahuwah and even worship on that day. And something me and my wife do is on, on uh, we, we, we start off from Friday evening to uh Saturday evening, so starting from maybe 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., uh, 6 p.m. Friday, 6 p.m. Saturday, we uh start making preparations. Well, and it is challenging, like as I was saying in the other video, it's challenging because at times, uh, we find ourselves not being able to, we had to clean up our house before we actually start, uh, going into Sabbath so that way it's not dirty throughout that whole uh, day or whatever so we, we go ahead and clean up and get it out the way beforehand and then that way it's clean until the Sabbath is over uh, washing dishes, cooking and, and cooking is fine uh, I guess what back in, in the ancient days they had to you know they had to do everything from scratch but now we got stuff we could just throw in the oven or microwave so I mean it's not, don't go to that degree of not eating, you know. One thing we don't do, though, is go out and, and have people uh, do anything for us. So we don't go out to eat. We don't, um, what else don't we do? We don't go to We don't go to the store. We do go to the store to buy anything. We go to the self-checkout line. We don't, because that way we don't have anybody uh, serving us because we don't want them uh, breaking Sabbath, even if they don't keep Sabbath. We don't want them breaking Sabbath or uh, it being our fault that they broke Sabbath. So we just overlook getting them to uh, buy for us. So let's look at Yahu chapter 17. Uh, it states in verse 19, 
Thus said Yahuwah unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of people of the people, whereby the kings of Yahuda or Judah come in, and by which they go out and all the gates of Yerushalayim. And say unto them, Hear ye the word of Yahuwah, ye kings of Yahuda, and all the Yahuda, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus says Yahuwah, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Shabbat, or the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Shabbat. Neither do ye any work, but hallow, make it holy, set it apart. The day of Shabbat, as I command your fathers, is to be a set apart day. And yet we use Saturday as every other day as a day to catch up on everything else that we didn't get to do during the week. Uh, even Friday evening is our, our, our go out and party night. Uh, Saturday is our go out and party day and party night. And then on Sunday we say uh, we go to worship, but we have it we have it all misconstrued in a sense and even though you know uh not getting not throwing it out there that uh worshiping on sunday that's what we were taught that's what we were trained and you know one thing me and my wife have realized after uh we got saved i always kept the sabbath by uh doing a bible study on the sabbath so me and my family got together every sabbath day even though i was doing it the opposite way uh, well, not the opposite way. I was doing it from Saturday evening to Sunday evening, but now I recognize that it's Friday evening to Saturday evening. So I begin to learn the process. And now that we're no longer consider ourselves Christian, but more of messianist and walking according to the path, because see, a lot of people are like, well, uh, the Christians don't have to keep the Sabbath. Yes, we do. Because even, well, yes, y'all do, because I'm not a Christian anymore. But anyway, the, the thing is, Yahusha himself, Jesus the Christ, Yahusha HaMashiach, he kept Sabbath, and they, him and his disciples went into the synagogues on Sabbath and read Torah. And that's something that me and my wife do. We read Torah in the, uh, in the evening on Friday evening. So look at here. It says, not, uh, but, verse 23, but they obeyed not, not inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff. They were, they were rebellious that they might not hear nor receive instruction. And, and what was the instruction? The commandment, to keep his commandment. What was his commandment? To keep the Sabbath holy, keep it set apart. For it was a day that was, was made because Yahuwah created uh, the earth in six days and on the Sabbath day he rested. And it shall come to pass if ye diligently hearken unto me, obey me, says Yahuwah, to bring the burden through the gates of this city on the Shabbat, but hollow the day of Shabbat, do not work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of the city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, and they and their princes, the men of Yahuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. And they shall come from the cities of Yahuda and from the places about Jerusalem and from the land of Benjamin or Benjamin and from the plain and from the mountains and from the Negev, bringing burnt offices, offerings and sacrifices, meat offerings and incense and bringing sacrifice of praise unto the house of Yahuwah. Now listen to this. But if ye will not hearken unto me to hallow the day of Shabbat and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Shabbat, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palace of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. And we know that for 490 years, they did not keep the sabbatical year. So just not, it's just not a Sabbath day out of a week, but it's also a sabbatical year. And by them not keeping the sabbatical year, they went into exile for what? 70 days. 70 weeks uh, as was written in the book of Jeremiah or Jeremiah and Daniel understood this thing and when he understood it he realized that the Babylonian exile was for 70 years and 70 years before each uh, sabbatical year that they didn't keep out of those 490 years amen so look at that and, and not even only that when we look into scripture and we recognize uh what we're supposed to be doing. Look at Le Leviticus. Leviticus chapter uh, 23. Leviticus chapter 23 also uh, gives us guidelines on how or uh, why we keep the Sabbath. So 
uh, verse three, and he shall offer the sacrifice of peace of, of the peace offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I went to the wrong chapter. Twenty-three, verse three. Okay, six days. I'm sorry, Leviticus chapter twenty-three, verse three. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy assembly. So, so it's, it's a, a holy assembly, which is the gathering, which is. That's what holy assembly, that's ecclesia. That's what the actual church or what church is supposed to be. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. So no matter where you dwell at in this earth, uh, it's, it's a, a Sabbath for his people to keep. And let's put it like this. Christians are his people too because once they gave his life to Yahusha HaMashiach, which they consider Jesus Christ, they have been engrafted into his uh, into the branch of of his his covenant and therefore they are to keep the sabbath as well but something happened along the way that caused us to think that we're not supposed to keep the sabbath they, and then not only that we don't even keep the holy feast days the appointed times and seasons of yahuwah so that's something that that's an area uh that we have to get better with let's look at this they they said that they would cause the time and the the uh laws to be changed check this out in in daniel daniel chapter 7 verse 25 then chapter 7 verse 25 also uh where it states that the times and the seasons would be changed daniel chapter 7 verse 25 Okay, and he shall speak great words against El Elyon and shall wear out the Kadeshim or the set apart ones of El Elyon of Yahuwah and think to change the times and the law to think to change the times and the law and they shall be given into his hand until a period of time and times and dividing of time and think about it now how we have how the enemy has infiltrated the church he the Satan rules uh this world and he runs it with a with a, a high fist. And what is those those times an iron fist? I mean, that's what he rules it with. And, and what does those times declare that he would change? It's the appointed feast times of Yahuwah Elohim, the appointed feast times, feast days, which is Passover, unleavened bread, Pentecost, trumpets, day of atonement, tabernacles. These are what we are supposed to keep. These are supposed to be our holy days, but they have taken the holy days and replaced them for holidays, Christmas, Easter, Halloween, uh, uh, what's another one? Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all those different holidays throughout the year. We got a holiday for every month in, in the United States. And, but yet we won't keep the holy feast days and, and, and most of them are to be kept in the same, around the same time period. You got some for the spring and some for the fall. And even if you look at of, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, Yahushua HaMashiach, our, our Messiah, he was actually born in, but what do we say? We in, in America, they say he was born around Christmas time. Not true. Not true. Nobody is out harvesting in the winter and reaping uh, the harvest. It's done during the spring. I mean, during the, during the fall. I'm sorry, during the fall. So he was born. So and and the feast of tabernacles is a time of rejoicing. So the father saw fit to have his son come at a time of rejoicing when we're supposed to be rejoicing, when we're supposed to be happy, when we're supposed to be praising him. And why do we dwell in the booths and the tabernacles? Is because when he brought us out of out of out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, we dwelt in tents, and he dwelt there among us. And he was our God and our most high Elohim. And he led us as a pillar, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night and was our God and, and did sign miracles and wonders amongst us. When we were hungry, we asked him and he fed us. When we were thirsty, we asked him and he gave us something to drink. And yet we, we forget what he had done for us. And so there are certain days that are supposed to be kept. That is a memorial unto him. Not only that, there are appointed time to tell about his arrival. His first arrival came during the fall 
feast day. And not only that, in his death, he 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 fulfilled the the spring feast days. So therefore, we still have some fall feast days that uh, shall be fulfilled in his second coming. I mean, so now look at this. And uh, Leviticus, back to Leviticus, chapter 23. We'll go back to 23 real quick. Leviticus chapter 23, and I'm going to stay there for a minute. Let's look at this. Leviticus chapter 23, let's look at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, chapter 23, verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month, in the Feast of Matzah, or Unleavened Bread, unto Yahuwah, seven days ye must eat Matzah. So that's when... Uh, we are to get rid of all the leaven in our house and we are to just eat unleavened bread. Nothing leavened should go in. And so therefore, and the first day you shall have a holy assembly. So there go, there you go. That's a Sabbath day. The first day is a Sabbath day. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah seven days. And the seventh day is also a holy assembly. You shall do no servile work therein. Okay, so what when he said that you were offering an uh, offering made by fire now, I gave this description in the last video, maybe nobody got a chance to hear it. Your Ruach Hakadesh, the Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Spirit, that's your, your fire, and you are the living sacrifice, as in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. You are the living sacrifice that you are to place on that fire, and you are to become a a, 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 a living sanctuary for the Father. And you are to place your offering on the altar. Your altar is what? Praise. Your altar is worship. Your offer, uh, I'm sorry, not your altar, but your offering to the altar is worship. Praise. Pray. Uh, reading your word. Just, just spending time sacrificing and denying yourself for the sake of others. That's your, your offering now. And, it's, and, and we must recognize that. So look what it says. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe saying. Okay. So now let's go down to verse 15. 15. Because that, that's covering uh, Pentecost. Yes, Pentecost was around before the, the Holy Ghost fell on the apostles. And ye shall count unto you from tomorrow after the Sabbath from that day. That ye brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Shabbat shall be complete. Even until tomorrow, after the seventh Shabbat, shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahuwah. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of two tenth deal, then shall be of a fine flour, they shall be baking with leaven, they are the first fruits of Yahuwah, and ye shall offer. With the bread, seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one bullock, and two rams, and they shall be for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, with their sweet, with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto Yahuwah. You become that that offering. Amen. Then you shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. And Yahuwah, now. Nah, the, the the sacrifices are, are are done away with because Yahusha is your is your li, your sacrifice and then you become the living sacrifice by going to him in repentance and the priest shall weigh them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before Yahuwah with the two lambs they shall be holy to Yahuwah for the priest and you shall proclaim of the self same day you shall proclaim of the self same day that it be made a holy assembly unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwelling throughout your generation. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, you shall not make clean riddance of the corners of your field. When ye reap, neither shall ye gather any gleaning of your harvest. You shall lead them unto the poor and unto the stranger. I am Yahuwah Yahu Elo Hakim. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, again, look at that. So, therefore, that, that goes to show that we are to keep the Shabbat. And you know what? The Shabbat might fall more than one time in a week when the Holy Feast days come. So, we had to keep that in mind. Because even, and you'll see in the Feast of, I think it's the Feast of Tabernacles, the 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 fall of the Sabbath fall twice. So, even if you have that Sabbath that comes from Friday to evening, 
you still, and, and the Sabbath fall that Monday, then you still have to keep the Sabbath that Friday evening. It doesn't change. And then on the eighth day, you would, uh, would keep that other Sabbath day, which would be probably right after the Sabbath. So either way it go, you might have three Sabbaths in one week or two Sabbaths in one week. It just depends on how it falls. This year, we kept the Sabbath two days back to back with uh with the Feast of, uh, of Trumpets. So, I'm sorry, the Feast, yeah, the Feast of Trumpets and the Feast of Tabernacles because they both fell on like a Thursday. So, we kept it from Wednesday to Thursday then, and then you had the other one fall right behind that. So, let's look at Trumpets real quick. Leviticus chapter 24. 23 verse 24 i'm sorry speak unto the children of yashariel saying in the seventh month in the first day of the month shall ye have a shabbat a memorial blowing the shofars a holy assembly ye shall do no servile work therein but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto yahoo so look at that another shabbat falls on his holy feast day and then look at the day of atonement real quick uh leviticus chapter 23 verse 26 through 31 and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe saying also on the 10th day of the seventh month is Yom Kippur the day of atonement actually known as in, in Christianity as the day of the Lord it shall be a holy assembly unto you and ye shall afflict your souls meaning that all the things that you enjoy doing must be cast to the side if you like eating put eating to the side if you like playing video games put video games to the side if you like exercise, anything that fulfills your enjoyment or your 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 desire to just uh, whatever you enjoy, you have to set to the side and you have to afflict. And that's what afflicting your soul is, something that, that you enjoy doing so much to the point where it bothers you when you can't do it. Amen. So, and I ain't talking about drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. I'm just talking about everyday normal stuff that you do in your life. Um some people like to work. You must afflict your soul. <laughs> so, and, and it said this, and, and and you must have an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. So, like I said, the Holy Ghost is that fire. Your praise and your worship is that offering that you send up. And you shall do no work in the same day, for it is Yom Kippur to make an atonement for you before Yahuwah Elohim. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day. He shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that does any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute. A statute means something that is prescribed. When a doctor prescribes you an uh, antibiotic or a pain uh, reliever, it's to help you uh, get through whatever your circumstance is, whether it's pain or whether you're trying to get rid of some form of bacterial disease. So you are prescribed a certain amount of milligrams and you are prescribed a certain dosage and you're prescribed a certain amount of times a day that you're supposed to do that. He tells us to daily read his word. He tells us to pray. So therefore, that's a statute. That means that that is something to be kept forever. That means that it's just something that must be done. It must be done. It is it, not a not an and if or but about it. A statute is something that must be done. So he said, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Remember, all your dwellings, whether you're in America, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in China, whether you're in Europe, whether you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're at. Wherever you dwell at, it's to be a statute and kept until the the father comes till his son comes and he establishes his kingdom is to be kept even then it's still gonna be kept even when he comes in the millennial reign that's a sabbatical millennium we have to keep it so if he's a god that wasn't doesn't change why would he change because christianity came into effect it doesn't change it doesn't change at all so so look 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 one more thing one more thing uh, Tabernacles 34. Speak unto your children of Yashariah, and I just go down in, in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24. Speak unto the children of Yashariah, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of Sukkot for seven days unto Yahuwah. Okay? And then he said, On the first day shall be a holy assembly. Ye shall do no servile work therein. There go another one. Shabbat. Shabbat. 
Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. On the eighth day shall be a holy assembly unto you. So there go another Shabbat. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work there. Look at that. Verse 39. Let's get down now. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. On the first day shall be a Shabbat, and on the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. And then even if you have a Shabbat in between us, so like I said, you might have the Shabbat, Shabbat, and another Shabbat. You just make sure you spend your time with the Father. Enjoy the time that you spend with the Father. But let me show you something. Because remember, we were talking about that he would change the times and the seasons. And the, uh, not the seasons, the times and the law. So look at this. Uh, from www.sabbathtruth.com, I'm reading an excerpt that tells what Constantine uh, uh changed it in the Council of Nicaea AD 321 and even in the Council of Nicaea if you go and look he changed the name of Yahusha to Jesus so look at this about 100 years before Christianity Christianity Egyptian Mithraist introduced the festival of Sunday dedicated to worshiping the sun and to the Roman Empire. Later, as Christianity grew, church leaders wished to increase the numbers of the church in order to make the gospel more attractive to non-Christians. And that's the problem. Compromise. If y'all look back at a video my wife did probably earlier this week, it's called Uncompromising Situations. The problem with the church is we compromise, and uh, they compromise too much with, with trying to, they not winning souls, they're just filling seats. And so, therefore, nobody's being delivered. Nobody's really receiving uh, the proper salvation. The only thing they think they saved from is, is from sin. They don't recognize that that they're not. That's not what you're saved from. So, therefore, we we try to make it more attractive by by bringing things in, of the world in. So, this is what they're saying. They brought in paganism. To, to attract them because this is what they were used to. So they brought it. But Yahoo is calling us to be set apart. That's what the Sabbath is, a set apart day, a holy day. And so therefore, we are to be his holy people, his Hakadash, and we are to be set apart as well. So look what this said. It said, and uh, it said to bring in more non-Christians by pagan customs, which were incorporated into the church's ceremony. The customs of Sunday worship was welcomed by Christians who desired to differentiate themselves from the Jews whom they hated. Whom Listen, whom they hated because the Jews' rejection of the Savior. No matter who rejects the Savior, you're not to hate them. Regardless of who rejects Hamashiach, you're not to hate them. I don't care if they're a Buddhist, a Hindu, whatever. You are to love those that hate you. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that persecute and despitefully use you. But yet, right here, the church took it upon themselves to want to differentiate themselves. And yet, they hated the Jews because they felt like they rejected the Savior. We have to realize this. We have, and, and even, let, let's be honest, Judaism is not an old, old um, a religion neither. So Christianity and Judaism, that it, it all, but when you become a messianist and you follow the way, the truth and the life, there, there won't be no differentiation, anything, because you just love and you just do according to what the father tells you to do. So look at this. Now, it says they hate it because Jews rejection of the Savior. The first day of the week began to be recognized as both a religious and civil holiday a religious and civil holiday. By the end of the second century, Christians considered it sinful to work on Sunday, but not Saturday, or, or not the Sabbath day, let's say that. The Roman emperor Constantine, a former sun worshiper, professed conversion to Christianity, though his subsequent actions suggest the conversion was more of a political move than a genuine heart change. Constantine named himself Bishop of the Catholic Church and enacted the first civil law regarding Sunday observance in A.D. 321. And you can look that up, the Council of Nicaea, A.D. 321. 
On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrate and people residing in the cities rest and let all workshops be closed. And the country, however, listen, listen to that, however. Now listen, Yahuwah didn't give you a however. He said, no servile work. This is what shall be done. And anybody that does it shall be cut off from his people. But look what he said. He, however, persons engaged in agricultural work may freely and lawfully continue their pursuit. Okay, so there go your, 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 your laws being changed. Here go your, your times being changed. Because it often happens that another day is not so suitable for grain growing or for vine planting. That's because that day was meant for that. The Sabbath day was meant to be set apart where you rest. Not, you see, where I'm going here, they, they took and they changed and they did what they wanted to do. He said, "Less by neglecting the proper moment for such operation, the bounty of heaven should be lost. And they tried to throw heaven in there. So look at this. Note that Constantine's law did not even mention the Sabbath, but referred to the mandated rest day as the venerable day of the sun. And how kind he was to allow people to observe it as it was convenient. Contrast this with God's command to observe the Sabbath, even during the plowing season and harvest. You can find that in Exodus 34, 21. Perhaps the church leaders noticed this laxity as well, for just four years later in AD 325, Pope Sylvester officially named Sunday the Lord's Day. And you can find out find that out in, in Revelation of your Bible. Because uh, you hear John say, and I was uh, I was on the on the Isle of Patmos on the Lord's Day is talking about Sunday. But I want to tell y'all something. A lot of the stuff in your Bible, don't take this personal. A lot of stuff in your Bible have been uh, worded to 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 have you think from a Western point of view. Uh, a, a lot of the stuff have been reworded. Uh, let's put it like this. Ages have been changed in here. Uh, names have been changed in here. A lot of stuff have been changed in here so that that uh, you, you're, it's kind of like a brainwashing. Now, God's word is his word. You, you read his word and he will reveal his truth 